Alrighty, welcome back, Alpha Hunters. Hopefully you are well rested and not frozen from a long, cold weekend. I guess they hit much of the U.S. Some of those pictures up in Kansas City and Buffalo. A lot of a lot of snow. Kind of kind of nuts, man. Uh, but hopefully you're having a pretty tubular, gnarly Tuesday, man. All right, all right. So. Um, I'm going to bring up something a little bit later on that you can probably um, see maybe more of here going forward. Um, but as far as today, we had a nice little gap down on the market today. A little bit over a quarter percent. A little bit of a flush there in the first 30 minutes. And then we had a nice little bounce there for an hour. And then... We got to about the 11 o'clock Eastern time, and we had this little drop. You see this little volume uptick, this little drop. This is what I'm going to talk about here uh, here in a little bit, okay? And then a uh, nice little bounce, kind of like a little double top here, uh, mid-morning. Then we kind of rolled over and tried to bounce a little bit over an hour ago, or about an hour ago, a little bit less than an hour ago. Uh, we came back down. So we'll see what happens here for the next two hours. Not looking the best. And, uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll just look and see how things are going. Okay. Let's take a look. How the Q's trading. Q's kind of looked similar. Uh, I'll be pretty honest. When I was looking at the market this morning, uh, I was noticing the Q's were very strong uh, during that bullish activity. And I'll show you what I was kind of looking at. IWM. Uh, nice gap down on the IWM. The IWM is down a little bit over one and a quarter percent. Nice gap down. Kind of just more bouncing sideways throughout the day. I mean, it did have the pops and drops when the SPY did, but not as much of a pop there. Okay. DIA, Dow Jones just kind of trending down kind of throughout the day. Did have that pop, but down at the section lows basically right now. RSP, gap down, kind of chopping sideways throughout the day. Kind of looks a little bit like the IWM. So, what I was, what I kind of looked for, uh, what I was kind of looking at when I was looking at the spy and the cues, and that cues a huge bump. And I was, I noticed right here, AAPL's down, like AAPL's down, gap down pretty good. So AAPL gap down pretty good. It's currently down 1.8 percent. You can see the very strong pop there. I was like, okay, well, I mean, Apple bounced at that, you know, second hour of the day kind of time. The market did. But I mean, I mean, was that what led the market to kind of bounce? So I just kind of took it through, uh, you know, the big tech stuff. Microsoft gapped up, not as strong during that time period of that bullishness. All right, Microsoft kind of lagged behind there. So I just kind of keep rolling through. Uh, Google didn't really lead it. Okay, well, all right, Google didn't really lead it. Meta, Meta didn't really lead it. I mean, all of these, you kind of see what, I'm, see what I'm looking at, you know, all kind of weak, all the big tech stuff, all the, you know, Mag 7, whatever you want to call them, not doing the best. Here's Amazon. Amazon, not, not really crushing it during that time period we had that bullishness. Okay, uh, just for grins, Tesla. All right, Te I mean, Tesla crushed it during that time period, a little bit, probably I'd say even a little bit earlier than Kind of when the market did. That was interesting. So I'm like, okay, what crushed during that that time period for the market to absolutely rip it higher? And because the Mag 7, which has the largest weighting out there, uh, and those you know those stocks weren't really doing it. Like Tesla did pretty good. Apple had a little bit of a rip there, but. You would need you would need like kind of all of them to participate for this. Uh, I would say Apple did have a pretty good rip. Tesla did have a pretty good rip. But what else was kind of going on? Nvidia. Look at Nvidia. Nvidia was crushing it during that time, even from the from the open. I mean, Nvidia is up two and three quarters of a percent, or two and two thirds of a percent currently. So yeah, Nvidia has been absolutely crushing higher. AMD. Look at this sucker. Seven percent. On the day, AMD. Look at that move. Ooh, it looks so good. So, let's see if I can find it. Um, there was a headline this morning that I did see that 
one of the big banks, big financial banks like JP Morgan or, oh man, I'm not going to be able to find it, am I? Maybe I'm not. Um, one of them basically said AMD is our, oh, here it is. Barclays favor, uh, picks favorites for second wave of AI AMD leads. And I'm like, that just seems like an article you put out to, to get the pump so you can dump. I mean, that is ridiculous. How in the world do you put out that article after AI and all these semiconductor stocks have already been crushing it? Is it like AI? Is it, is it like Nvidia hasn't been benefiting from, you know, this wave of AI? No, they absolutely have been. And I, yeah, so I, I mean, I like why, why put that out now? So I, I don't know. To me, that seems like a like a like a news or something that you would put out to to get those stocks to pop so you can dump them because they've already made a heck of a run. You just want to get an extra, you know, whatever percent out of them you can. Anyways, uh, that is what kind of has been led the market bullishness today is really the semiconductors. You take a look at that heat map. I bet you it's just yeah, it's just these two semiconductors really. You got a little bit of Tesla there, but I mean, outside of that, you look at just a lot of red, a lot of red. So I, I would, uh, kind of, kind of very interesting, uh, on that article kinda, or headline or whatever kind of research, whatever you want to call it, getting put out by Barclays. I think that was kind of a pathetic move on their part. Anyways, let's keep rolling through VIX, 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 VIX. All right, VIX lower or had the, a move higher today. Um, very interesting why the VIX moved that much higher on the weekly open. Wow. Okay. That's a, that's a pretty strong move there. I don't typically like to see the, the VIX move sharply higher before the market, the SP 500 is really broken down. Like the SP 500 SPY hasn't really broken down. Like we haven't gotten below J January fifth that low and the vix had a very nice pop higher today so unless the vix comes down here over the next couple of days i wouldn't i mean that looks like people are just a little too protective on any kind of pullback in my opinion so maybe the market wouldn't have a significant downside to it it's kind of the way i kind of initially take it but it is also the first trading day for the week so it might it might pull back throughout the rest of the week. We'll just take it. We'll just have to see what happens tomorrow, Thursday. Dollar DXY. So I'm going to get into a little bit more of this and what I'm going to talk about here in a second. DXY, nice push higher. Kind of mentioned it last week. Like we're getting into, a, uh, you know, a situation here the last couple days where we, we need to be making a decision here. And, uh, Got a little bit of an indication yesterday. Nice, strong finish higher yesterday. I get it. It was a holiday. It, like nobody was probably paying attention to it. But you can see yesterday's kind of close on a holiday. Nothing had closed up in that level at least over the past week and a half, right? And then obviously, you know, before that we were kind of dipping. But that was the highest close we had going all the way back to this red candle back on December 13th. So... We got that pop, it cleared. We, we're, we're above that, that wick that we put in last Thursday. We broke the 50 EMA. We broke that Jan 5th high wick. So you're probably just gonna be looking for any kind of bullish move uh, or any kind of like little quick pullbacks here, maybe over the next day. It might happen quick tomorrow. Maybe start a little bit of that today. Any kind of pullback into like that 103 one level to 103 level. And you're probably just going to be looking to take that bullish for now, at least up to this level, because that's, I believe, where the 200 moving average was sitting, or the 100 moving average was sitting, so, or will be sitting, All right? Yeah, 100 would be about in that area, so, yeah, that, that would be my game plan of this. I, I wouldn't want to be doing anything long term, but to me, that would be a, a very clear move, at least 
up like one, a little bit over a point there on the DXY. Anyways, moving on. GLD, nice breakdown here on the GLD. Gold's up, GLD's down. Makes sense. Nothing crazy though. Uh, just continue to look to be bullish on anything on, on pullbacks. 10 year yield. All right. So, this is where we're going to talk about some stuff. 10 year yield. Yields, yields, yields. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's a pretty good move today. Dollar's having a pretty good move today, but uh, we're not really taking out any significant highs yet. All the way back from January 5th. That was kind of the high that we've had so far this year. And um, that this pop that we had this morning, 11 o'clock Eastern, that coincides with this drop that we had. Now, you might say, well, what happened? Well, what did happen? And it goes back to treasury auctions, the world of boring treasury auctions. So you see the auction dates here, January 16th. Boom, that's today, right? We also have one down here, you can see uh, they did 13 weeks, 26 weeks, 42 day. You know, that's that's the stuff that they did. And you're like, well, that's not the 10 year. Well, what you need to understand about treasury auctions is any 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 of the time frame is going to affect in, you know the whole kind of duration of all the yields, okay? So even if it might be like a 2 year, it, it, I mean, depending on how it goes, if it's if it's really bad, or if it's really good, it's going to affect the 10, the 20, and the 30. So, so don't think that it, it won't, that they won't affect each other. Anyways, that is what I wanted to kind of talk about. Because you look at the two year, look at that two year, nice drop off there Thursday, Friday last week, right? That was Friday. Well, yeah, it was not a holiday yesterday. Or even though it was a holiday yesterday, it didn't trade. So you can see that pop there on the two year. So that we got this morning. So that is rather, I would say rather concerning to see how the market is so far handling very short term treasury auctions, because I wouldn't have thought these short term, like these are within half a year, right? It's 26 weeks. That's half a year, six months. Like this is a, a month and a half. That's one quarter. So, that, like, to me, those shouldn't be a big deal. I don't know why they are struggle bussing. And really, all the ones that we're going to get maybe this week, early next week, they're all within a year, roughly. 52 weeks, about one year out. But we're going to get one tomorrow. Auction date, the 17th. This is going to be a 10-year, 19, well, 10-year. I'm sorry. No, not a 10-year. 19-year. And then uh, to follow it up on Thursday, we're going to get a 10-year. So uh, we'll also have next week two fives and seven. So we're going to get quite a bit of treasure auctions. So if this continues to be an issue, this is why I'm bringing it up. If this continues to be an issue, we're going to get plenty of different treasure auctions here uh, over the next you know, two, two days this week and then a couple days next week. And we will also be in earnings season. So, um, yeah, if it doesn't go well, then it might not. I mean, that, it's not going to sound be good for the markets, that kind of thing. Um, so, anyways, we'll, I mean, we'll continue to watch, monitor, treasury auctions. But, I mean, the short-term stuff within, like, one year, the treasury shouldn't be having an issue with those. And if the market's acting that poorly with short-terms, that, that is not good. That is not good. Anyways, so you can see the 10 and 2 inversion here moving sharply higher, still continuing that move that it started towards the end of last week. Okay, HYG, I'm going to imagine all these bonds are going to be down pretty good. HYG, you can see reversing. Nice upper wick, kind of talked about the upper wick spot on Friday, kind of back where that we kind of topped out at the end of December. Reversing, coming back down. Definitely people are going to say, oh, this looks like a double top at a major support and resistance level. Well, you're going to have to really see, make sure it breaks this neckline that we did have back from the beginning of January. LQD, 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 definitely coming down pretty good. People could kind of talk about this, either, you know, either way. This, I mean, this could be a, 
a double top kind of action or i mean this could be uh this could be what, like a really weird kind of head and shoulders type of action because the only reason why i say this those shoulders are roughly at the same level so and then which neckline do you do you kind of play the breakdown do you play this left one or the right one uh, you can kind of maybe layer into it, and then uh, you know, obviously if it breaks this this one that we had from uh, early January, you know you can just full in at that point in time. But yeah, that's a it was always a kind of a weird. I always thought that was kind of a weird breakdown and how this set up. I was like, man, it doesn't. It wouldn't look like a really good head and shoulders, but it, I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, just just kind of interesting little note there. Um, TLT. Full breakdown. Kind of mentioned this last week. You had the TLT going sideways. You had the HYG trying to bounce. And it was, it was coming down to HYG leads us up. TLT leads us down. Which one of these is going to win out? Because the TLT was not performing well last week at all. And the HYG was. So it was like, okay, which one of these is going to get dragged the other way? Well, right now the HYG looks like it's going to get dragged down because the TLT is going to have a, I mean, this thing's having a very, very good breakdown here. So, um, let me see. What about where are we? Oh, I grabbed the wrong thing. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're not even back to roughly two, uh, a third of a pullback here. All right, we need to go a little bit more, um, at least. So, but really, you'd probably be looking for a pullback all the way down into this area. So, yeah, I mean, we might see bonds drop off here for a bit because you'd really want to see it down into this area below 90. Below 90. That would be, that'd be the sweet spot there for the TLT. Okay. Check that sector rotation. Their performance. See how things are moving. Energies. Okay. Uh, yeah, we got some pretty good gap downs. Um, yeah, you can see tech, you know, tech in that kind of second hour of the day, you can see tech just absolutely crushed it and mostly led by um, you know, NVIDIA was flying higher. AMD was flying higher. We kind of looked at both of those, but yet, you know, AAPL make its morning reversal and kind of join the crowd there and that, or join in that second hour bullish pop. And then also Tesla did as well, TSLA. Uh, but yeah, you can see tech outperforming the best today. Discretionary is also performing pretty good. Tesla's probably helping out there pretty good. Uh, you got healthcare barely outperforming as well. Utilities kind of in line with the market. You got communications, real estate, staples, financials barely underperforming there. And you got industrials, materials, energy's biggest lagger on the day. All right. Let's take out the gap and see how bad it is. Yeah. So if you take out the gap, take out the gap, one thing you notice is energies or tech, I'm sorry, tech is barely outperforming the SP 500. Energies is uh, I mean, they've gotten crushed intraday. Uh, you also have communication, staples, industrials, real estate, and materials all un barely underperforming there, and then yeah, you got tech just barely outperforming. And then financials, utilities, healthcare, and discretionary is all outperforming there on the day. So that's how the day has looked today. <laughs> 